Back about two months ago, we did a video installing tow mirrors on a 2015 Chevrolet Silverado. It originally came with sport mirrors. My buddy had came from a 2018 2500 GMC Denali that had the tow mirrors down to that truck with the sport mirrors and he absolutely hated them. Well, Boost Auto had reached out and sponsored us a set of mirrors for his truck and we got them put on, he absolutely loves them. The differences between those mirrors and my mirrors is my mirrors have heated upper glass and those mirrors have heated upper and lower glass. The dotted LEDs that I have did not have turn signals until after I added the Boost Auto mod, but now I have the turn signals where the function is the same as what his had, but those sequential turn signals with the LED strip really sets those off. And I never would have thought I would have liked them that much until after I got them installed on his truck. I've been seeing his truck coming and going around town and the more I see them, the more I like it. And I got thinking maybe I should reach out to Boost Auto and see if they sponsor a set for my truck. I mean, she got near 600,000 miles on her, but she deserves nice things too, right? So I sent them an email, they hooked us up. New tow mirrors for the 2018 Chevy Silverado. These mirrors have been hanging on the side of this truck for almost 600,000 miles, 580,000 miles. So while they're still functional, you know, this will be a nice upgrade. And if you guys want to keep up with my channel, I don't do a lot of upgrades for cosmetics on this truck because it's, she gets beat to death going in the road all the time. But the more I looked at those sequential turns on my buddy's truck and different things in the heated upper and lower glass and I got to thinking about it, yeah, it just, it, it, it's something really nice that I would like to put on, to have on this truck. And thank you so much for Boost for sending these out. Now, if you've never bought from Boost Auto before, something that I can tell you to expect is when you get, I haven't opened this box yet, but whenever I cut it open and I go into it, there's gonna be a, car, uh, if there's wiring that has to be done, there will be a card in with that wiring. And you can type in that web address that's on that card and it will take you to the video that shows you how to do uh, do your wire modification. So much better than traditional instructions I, to me. I'm not much of a reader. I'm more of a see it and do it or hands on kind of person. And that helps me out so much with installs, with anything. That's why we have YouTube. So we can look, look it up on YouTube. But these guys have their own YouTube channel with, I don't know how many instructional videos, but a ton of instructional videos. Now, as far as I know, they liked my last video, so they went ahead and hooked me up on this video. And as far as I know, I have some of the M-Series uh, steps that I would like to get and install for, uh, on another truck. And as soon as the S-Series cab lights come out that'll fit this truck, as soon as they get them finished and on the market, I'll be getting a set of cab lights for this truck. So if you're interested in that, hit subscribe and stay tuned for that video. Uh, big thank you to Boost Auto. I'm ready to get these installed and it's trying to rain on me. Again, it's been raining all freaking week, man. But uh, I'm here at my buddy's shop just in case I do need to pull inside. I'd also want to get it done before it gets dark. This should be a really simple install. Pulling the door panel should be the hardest part. I'm thinking since how my truck already has the functionality part that the mirrors will need. I'm hoping it's plug and play, but if there is any wire mods, I'll show you how to do that as well. Same as any other install that I do, the first thing I want to do is just open the box and make sure everything is here and I know where everything is at. Make sure and get everything laid out. This would be the passenger side. No, nope, this would be the driver's side. I got it turned wrong. So when you get your mirrors, here's what you can expect from the packaging. Here's our new mirror. I really, really like that. And I wanted to make sure we're there. See, we got some wires here and we got some nuts to go back on the new studs. And tow mirror upgrade instructions, DO3 small mirror upgrade instructions. Well, I said about them having a web address right there. That way you can go straight to their install videos. So it was starting to rain on us, so I decided to move the truck inside. Um, the only tools that I can think of that we're gonna need, a ratchet, it, or it doesn't have to be a battery powered ratchet. A pick, you're gonna need a pick. Um, nylon pry tool, if you've got one, that's for the better. A seven millimeter socket, you will need some sort of an extension. 
And I also have a different trim pry tool here too that works just a little bit better, you know, than the nylon one. The nylon's got its place, not for scratching stuff up. This is for the hard, stubborn ones. Now with the door panel cleaned out, this piece right here, I'm gonna try to just grab it right under here and pull. Pull from the bottom and twist up because you have these fingers here you don't wanna break off. So what's the magnet for? There is one seven millimeter bolt right in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and get it first. I know most of the time it's later on when I take it and you don't wanna drop that screw. That's why you need the magnet. So now I got the magnet. There's the one screw. When you start that screw back, place it centered on the magnet. You can reach in there and start it with the magnet as well. That's why the magnet's kind of important. The next four screws hold the door panel on. There's two right down here at the bottom. There's one. And if you just feel across, you can feel them. I don't know that I've ever laid eyes on them. There's a the second one. Now on the next one, where the pick comes in handy, right here where I have the pick, right at the back corner, there's a small indention, and you get in behind it, run it across the bottom, and it pops this plastic trim piece out. You've got one more seven millimeter right here. Right there. The next seven millimeter is underneath this panel right here. So we're gonna come right in here and lift up. Right like that. And get this guy out of the way. Now, I was wrong, there are two more right here. So. magnet there's those two and now that we've got them out we're going to take our nylon pry tool because we don't want to scratch the trim or the paint on the door and just get in here somewhere and start start popping them loose and once you get it popped loose like mine did yours may not be that easy um, you just start working around and popping them loose. You can kind of tell where the where the pins are at. And in my experience, it's a lot better to when you start to wiggle this door panel off to try to get this piece has got to come out past the top piece. So you'll need to get that lip up over that then lift and just lift and wiggle and eventually it'll come loose. So, right like that. Once it comes up like that, you can grab it from this side, lift it up out of the window track, and now you have it to this point, and I'm gonna have to reposition you guys so you can see where we're at. All right, so now that I got you guys repositioned, first thing I'm gonna do, Take this, is for your door handle to open the door. Press down and pull this back. When this comes back, slip it right out like that. Next thing we're gonna have is there is a big plug right here. Pull the red lock forward. There's a little button on top right here. Press that button down, lift this lever and I don't know if I mentioned this or not, make sure your ground battery posts are disconnected. That's got the door panel out of the way. So now with the door panel out of the way, the first thing I wanna point out, if you just want to keep your dotted LEDs and add the turn signal, because 
These, this truck didn't come with turn signals. It came with a running light, marker light, but no turn signal on the mirror. On the outside, it did have a, a turn signal to the back side, but none to the front. That is what this box is for. This is the Boost Auto wiring mod that you install to make those lights flash. It's been on here for every bit of two years. Uh, I'll leave a link to that video as well. And it caught me in the rain that day too, but I didn't have a shop. So, you know, I did the best I could with it. Anyway, um, next thing I'm gonna do, the mirror harness. We're gonna go ahead and unplug it. There's a little tab right here. If you can push that tab, unplug it right there. Then the next thing you see right here, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out, make dang sure not to pry against that because if you bend it, your lock won't go back in straight. I normally come here because it's easier and then I twist it down, pop it out if I have to do one. Then there's another one right here. Now this piece right here has a clip in behind it. So you'll need to, it takes a little bit of pressure to get it pulled loose. So you pop it loose, pull straight out. Then you can push it in this way and it'll unlatch from the door. Now, if this doesn't come completely out, I'm just gonna leave it like that. No reason. I haven't done it this way before. I'm just gonna try it like that. These bolts right here are all we need access to. So now I will um, go ahead and grab a 10 millimeter for these and we'll go ahead and get this old mirror off. I recommend don't take all of these off, leave one loosely started. That way the mirror doesn't fall off while you're working on it. So I noticed in the last install I did, if you're going, the 2500 has one, two, three, four studs through the, through the door to hold it on. The 1500 sport mirror only had one, two, three. That one wasn't there. There wasn't a hole to put this one through. So I took a four millimeter socket and took that stud out. Two different ways that you can do it. One is do like I did, take that stud out his mirrors have not fallen off with three studs holding them on. They're still good, but you can also drill that hole, put the stud through and put the nut on if you wanted to. To me, that's entirely up to you. I opted not to do that on his truck because I don't like drilling holes in other people's trucks. If he would have said they were shaky or anything like that, we would have came back and done it. My truck does have the four holes and I learned that on his truck. I didn't know that before I did that video on his truck. So we will come around here and well getting a little ahead of myself there the wire holders right here we're going to take and get right under them and pop some out trying not to damage them because i may want to reuse those mirrors one day Another thing, make note of where these come out because I put one back in the wrong spot on the last install I did and it caused me a, a hard time putting the door panel back on and when I figured it out, I'm like, what was I even thinking? So make sure and keep mental note of where these come out. Or record it like I'm doing so you can go back and look at the video. So now we are going to take this last nut off right here. Get this rubber grommet started through the door. And there is one little squeeze tab that actually goes on the back side of the mirror. I'll show you in just a second. That tab, there's really no way to release it. You just have to pull it and pop it out and it's right beside of the top bolt. So we'll put this mirror to the side Then I take a rag of some sort and get in here and clean off that surface, that mating surface for the new gasket. And this one is not that bad because I have pulled this one off before and I've cleaned it before. But the first time I pulled it off, it was filthy. We're gonna feed our wires through. 
be really careful when you're coming in that you don't let those studs scratch the paint on your vehicle. Pull the rubber grommet in. Feels like the studs are starting. And don't force anything, just let it, you know, wiggle it around. It'll eventually fall in. This one is right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the nut back on it, hold it in place while I'm moving her so I can turn it loose. And just kind of wiggle it around. You're also making sure the gasket goes in correctly. Because if you get on top of the gasket, it won't seat properly. There. This one, the mirror looked fine because it's all oblong because it's not securely mounted to the truck. It, it looked straight, but it wasn't straight. And that was keeping this stud right here from coming through. I couldn't tell that from the back side over here. So now I'm gonna press it in to make sure the gasket feels like it's sitting in right. The last thing anybody wants is a set of leaky mirrors. Take your time and don't mess that gasket up. Now, snug them up a little at a time. not trying to bend the door. We're just trying to make sure they're all about the same torque holding the mirror to the door. So I want to check my gap and make sure everything looks good. Make sure it looks like it's well seated to the door and it does make sure I don't have something hung in there holding it way out that I didn't see. I should check that earlier and put our wire holders back where they go. Because remember I was talking about in the event that you, I put it over here, I'll put it right there. You can see where I scratched it getting it out and that's no good. I uh, also, whenever you're messing with this, I would take a trim removal tool and pop this out because I broke this whenever I was doing the wire mod. I couldn't figure out how to get it off and I was trying to release the tab and slide it off of that. I should have just popped the whole thing out. So don't, you know, learn from my mistakes. Don't do what I did. Not right there. Now we're going to plug it in. Right like that. Same time. Before you put this back on, go ahead and pull it down. So it'll pull this forward and get it set in the groove that it goes into. All the way around. Even this front piece right here has a and it's got to slide in and you'll see where it just covers the white paint. It's a white lip sticking out there. You just want it to be on the inside of that lip where to cover that paint. And that locks it in. It causes it not to be able to pull back. Then before you get too crazy popping the pins in, take your trim removal tool, tool and come around, get it up under the edge of the weather stripping and come around and get the weather stripping back up on the edge of the trim piece here. Really looks good back here except for one little spot right there. And then a little spot around the actual curve. Right like that. I wish I had a better light to show you guys better, but maybe you'll get the gist of it. it it's really simple. It just looks tricky when it comes off. But, all right. Next thing that I had learned the hard way about putting the door panel on, I tried it and tried it and tried it and tried it and just could not get it. And finally, I found a video where someone showed taking these clips as easily, easily as you can, pull them out of the door. So now that we've got our metal clips off the door panel, just go down through here and slip them right back in. You can see these little grooves where they come out. 
You'll put one in every groove, unless you're like me and over time you've lost one. I didn't lose it tonight, but I have lost one. I'm gonna put the most solid spots is where I wanna keep it. So I'm thinking if I've gotta be short one, I'd rather be short that one. So now, take your weather stripping, where the little like that little wings, those go up. Get that set back down in there real solid. And you'll see, just like it looked from the factory, it's actually closed to on the window. So when the window goes back up, I don't know why I always pull the door panel off of the window down, just have it. But the window is partially up right there and it didn't cause a bit of trouble. So I don't think it really matters. It's just the way I prefer to do it. Time to put the door panel back on. We take our plug, find the bottom of the cam lock plug, and it is very important that this thing goes straight. Do not force it at all. Then once it starts in, press it evenly on both sides. Pull the cam lock forward. You'll hear it click. Push the red lock back in. Take this here. Stretch it out. There. Now we're ready to pop the door panel itself back on. I'm putting the door panel back on is Get it centered in the window, tip it up so this piece goes underneath this and apply a little pressure, pull it out like that. Make sure that our door lock rod is going through here. Tilt it out, get it seated on the, well, shoot, where did the door lock rod go? There it is. And and you squeeze and pop these clips back in. Once you get it, I try to start the front first and then let it down into the track of the weather stripping, guide the door lock rod through, and then just keep knocking it down until it gets where it'll slip right back under there. When you get it to this point, all of your um, squeeze right here to make sure and pop all those pins back in, all of these pins should be lined up so you can just Go around and tap it back into place. Then we're ready to start putting our screws back in. There's that one and that one. I don't just slam these tight either. Oh. One more to go right here. There it is. Now for the aggravating one. Man, to wiggle it around just a little bit to get it to go into the hole and just start turning and it should start. One more. Now there's one more that goes right here. Take this. It's got the little ledges right here. Get them started. Pop that back in. Now I'm gonna hook both the grounds back up on my battery. We're gonna check, make sure this one, everything, I wanna make sure everything works on it like it's supposed to before we go over to the next one and start tearing that side down. That's working. The sequential is working. and parking light with the startup sequence. That's pretty cool. We'll show that again here in a little bit. Back outside and I'm gonna show you the difference between the one and the two. Another reason I'm backing out is I gotta reposition the truck anyway, so I'm excited, super excited to see what they look like. Power folding, both work. They're both on time, they both run the same. Now, there's the parking lights, left turn, 
and you can see what I like about that sequential turn versus the old turn. Sequential turn, the old turn. So by the time I got finished recording last night, it was dark, it was late. So it's the next afternoon. So far I'm loving the mirrors, loving the look. It's everything I thought it was gonna be. It looks just like the ones on my buddy's truck. The power folding works. Power unfolding works. Everything works just like it should. So I did check the upper and lower glass with one of the little thermal uh, thermometers and heated upper and lower glass. That's gonna be so handy this winter because I hate when this bottom glass is fogged out. But here it is with just the running lights. No running lights. There's your sequential turn signals I was talking about, and I love that. Then turn the marker lights on. There they are. And that's how it looks as you're going. Anyway, um, don't forget to check out their website. They don't just cater to this style truck. They don't just cater to Chevrolets. If you think that you might like this mirror on your Dodge pickup, I'm pretty sure they, they offer that on their website. Uh, the late model key fobs for the older style trucks. Uh, this truck came factory with a charging pad for your phone. They have the retrofit kits to retrofit your older model truck or your different truck that didn't come with that over to wireless charging for your phone. Um, just all kind of stuff. The links to everything is in the description. Go in and check them out. The Luma Steps, those things are awesome. Um, just too many products to list. Now, even before they started sponsoring my channel, I had already made like four or five purchases and I only call customer service once. But when I called the one time, they were great. I mean, the one guy he got on the phone and as soon as he realized that it was something that we needed more help with, he transferred me to a technician. They stayed on the phone with me until we got it, got it ironed out. And like I say, even if they told me they weren't gonna sponsor another video, you'd still be seeing videos because I like their products. Anyway, Check the links in the description. There's the video on the turn signal mod. If you don't want to change over to a full set of mirrors, but you would like that blinking light for a turn signal, I'll leave that a link to that video in the description. Plus, I'll leave a link to the install. If you have sport mirrors and you want to change it up to tow mirrors, I'll leave the link to that video uh, in the description. Plus, I'll leave the links to these mirrors for this truck in the description. There'll be a lot of links down here for you to look through, and I'll try to label it as best I can so you know what you're clicking into. All right, guys, it's getting late. I'm going to go ahead and end this. Thank you so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Click on, click on those links, and I will see you in the next video.